This is the P-2008 from the Technum Company. It has a whole line of uh, light sport aircraft and this is one they introduced in 2008. But this aircraft's got a sticker on the side of it that says Fly Cool Aircraft Air Conditioning. And people kind of can't believe that because in their experience with a, maybe a small rental car or a small vehicle that they own themselves, when you turn the air conditioning on in a small car, you can feel the power loss and they kind of equate that memory to this airplane and go, well, there must be something wrong with this. We're speaking today with Dave Graham. He's working with the AMT company that makes Flycool. And I'm Dan Johnson. And we're going to ask you some questions, Dave, about Flycool. And first of all, what's your role with the company now? Hey, I just joined the company. I am responsible for business development. You've been in this industry a while, so you know your way around. And I'm guessing that's the uh, expertise they were hoping to acquire yes, here. Yes, I've been in the uh, uh, LSA business for, uh, oh, seven years. and. Uh, and been in the aircraft business for going on 13. So you know a thing or two. Um, tell us what Flycool's mission here is. Obviously it's aircraft air conditioning and, and you know on a large airplane that doesn't surprise me too much. Maybe a Cirrus or a twin engine Cessna or like that. But how did they happen to get in a light sport air conditioning? Yeah, light sport air, air conditioning was a, a response from market demand. There was a lot of people that uh, contacted AMT through their website to ask, uh, to request for uh, an airborne electric system for a light sport aircraft. It was developed uh, last year. Um, it's a 28 volt system. It throws about 38 amps and puts out about 10,000 BTUs of uh, cooling power. And that's equivalent to a mid sized sedan. So a mid sized American car is around about 10,000 BTUs of cooling. So in an automobile like that, driving around in a hot climate, you expect it to cool down the entire car, not just the front seat or something. Does that do this? I mean, it's a pretty good cubic volume inside this P2008. Uh, yes, it's about... Uh, how long does it take for it to do its job? Does it take a while or... It's about, uh, about six minutes and you'll get a 20 degree F reduction in temperature. 20 degrees, okay. And, uh, That's comparable to a home system. Then. Yes. And you will, uh, you'll see uh, after, of course, as the air gets recirculated, it gets colder and colder and colder. What's the installation effort to install the AMT? Yeah. Uh, there's uh, two basic elements. There's the air conditioning element, which goes in the rear, and there's a, a 28 volt alternator that goes in the front. This is all part of the package it's that all, you get? Yeah, okay. all part of the package that you get. So that's using not the aircraft's alternator, uh, al alternator then, it's using the extra one that you're yes, getting? Yes, a second alternator. Okay. Yes. Does that affect power output of the engine? It, it does marginally. Uh, when the uh, air conditioning is running, it uh, takes about uh, 800 watts, which is just a little over one horsepower okay. of power to drive the oh, alternator. That's a very modest amount of yeah. consumption out of a 100 horsepower engine. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm kind of guessing that the main, you know, once you get up at five, eight, ten thousand feet or something, the outside air temperature is generally enough cooler that you maybe don't even need this system then. So you're using it. Probably while taxiing, airport operations, waiting in line at busy airports like Sun and Fun or mm -hmm. Oshkosh or like that. Can the system operate with, with the with the RPM of the engine reduced for those kinds of situations? Yes. Does the system still perform well? Yes. The, the system was designed, the, the pulley uh, on the uh, alternator was designed to be effective uh, once the engine RPM in a Rotex hits 1500 RPM. Uh, so it can fully power the uh, fully power the alternate or fully power the air conditioning system once the engine hits uh, 1500 RPM. Which you know the yeah average most Rotex you're running it around 18, that or 18 or, 18 or 2000 20, all the time anyway, just yeah. because that's where the engine likes to be kind of yeah. thing. Now this is a Rotex which revs higher than mm -hmm. some viewers may be used to in a Lycoming Continental, so on, Jabiru. Uh, so that's not a high RPM, that's kind of a fast idle is all mm -hmm. it is. But that's enough to totally power the system and cool the air yes, aircraft down. Yeah. Well, the they, other, they, I'm looking on the outside here, I see there's a plug. Can you actually plug this in while you're parked? Yes, yeah, you can. It is a 28 volt uh, external power uh, socket. So the airplane, you can plug that in while you're doing your walk around. By the time you finish your walk around, which usually takes five or six minutes, the aircraft will be already pre-cooled. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. And that's one of the, cool. that, that is one of the real advantages of the system because of the external power card. And how does the system work then? I'm a pilot, I'm sitting in the seat. What do I all have to do to, to uh, start this uh, unit up? Uh, you've got a switch here. In the middle is off. Forward is fan. And uh, backwards is air conditioning. And that's a, it's as easy as that. Switch it on. Uh, and how do you control how much cold you have? Uh, with the uh, uh, there's a, a rheostat here uh, right beside it, and that controls the fan speed on the evaporator. 
and the fan speed on the condenser is always the same speed, which is pretty similar to an uh, to an automotive system. And by moving the evaporator quicker than you're uh, you're, you're adjusting the temperature output. Yeah, you are. Does it produce any heat as well? And this system does not. That is something that we're working on at the moment. Okay, so it could do like yeah. a heat pump in a house that uh, goes yeah. both ways kind of thing. Yeah, it could. Uh, the, the solution that we're uh, probably going to do is uh, is with an electric heating element because at really cold temperatures there's not enough energy in the ah, air okay, sure. to pump it in from the outside. Yeah, heat pumps need that kind of differential yeah. I know. So, okay. What about the all out weight of the unit? How, uh, like how does it affect the CFG or the gross weight of the aircraft, that type of thing? Well you see on the Technam the alternator is way out in front and the air conditioner is way out in back so the CFG uh, hasn't moved at all. The total weight of the installation including the alternator uh, is approximately 45 pounds. So the air conditioning on its own is 22 pounds. Okay, so the air conditioning unit's only half of that, but you've got some other stuff you have to yeah. have, like the second alternator, yeah. and then are there are there big fat hoses running back and forth like there would be in some air conditioner no. systems? No, it's all everything for the air conditioning is uh, located in the back. So yeah. all the cool is coming from the back and moving forward yeah. in the aircraft. Mm -hmm. Does that do anything about uh, a clogged up windscreen? Actually, <laughs> Uh, Jules, who is the owner of this aircraft, says this is magnificent for uh, a fogged up morning. He just turns on the air conditioner for about three minutes and he says everything is totally clear. Beautiful. Cool air uh, knocks out that kind of uh, windscreen moisture pretty mm -hmm. quick, I know. So. Now, how about installation time? Is this something where the guy's airplane is going to be down for two weeks while you do the work to it? Uh, the first installation you can expect about uh, two to three weeks. Uh, they have worked out all the installation issues and the average installation time, including the alternator, all the modifications, uh, is less than a week. So for this airplane, for example, you now have an installation yep. system for it, so mm -hmm. it would take about a week's worth of work yeah, to get it installed. less than a week's worth of work. So bring it in to uh, anyone to do that, or who, who can do that kind of installation, there, Dave? There are two, uh, for the Technam, it, the Technam are doing it themselves in Winter Haven, Florida, and uh, there, we also have a, another installation center at U.S. Aviation Group in Denton, Texas. Excellent. And I assume others will come along in time. Yes, they will, yeah. Okay, and your company, uh, AMT, uh, I've forgotten what that stands for now. I have seen it, but... Air Management Technology. Well, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So yeah. Do you do aircraft other than LSA? Yes, uh, the main business is uh, is design service, ECS, Environmental Control Systems, for larger aircraft. So anything from an LSA to a mid-sized jet. And we also make some components, uh, air management valves, uh, temperature control valves for turbine engines, and uh, we're working on pressurization systems. All right, well, uh, thanks for a lot of information there, Dave, but uh, there's always more that people have to ask, so where can we send them on the web to find more about AMT and the fly cool system? Go to amt-aero.com. Okay, pretty simple. I've done reports on the AMT and the fly cool system on other aircraft as well, and uh, have some information about the company, and you can find all that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us here in Paradise City in the LSA Mall.